In this problem, we're told a vertical spring with spring stiffness constant 305 newton over meters oscillates with an amplitude of 28 centimeters when a 0.26 kilogram hangs from it. The mass passes through the equilibrium point y equals 0 with positive velocity at t equals 0. A. What equation describes this motion as a function of time? B. At what times will the spring be the longest and shortest? So in order to solve this problem, you need to know the equations, right? So there's some set equations that describe uh, motion, something going in simple harmonic motion like this, right? So what are these equations? So these equations are both going to be y of t, right, which describe the motion. So one is going to be a times the cosine of omega t. And then the other one is going to be equal to a times the sine of omega t. Right, so these are going to be the equations we use. Well, we're only going to use one of them, but I'll show you which one we use and why we use it in a second. So let's just write down what we're given first, though. So let's write down our given. So we're given that the spring stiffness constant, which essentially is k, they're telling us k, that's what that means, is 305 newton over meters we're given an amplitude i'll just call it a which equals 28 centimeters and then we're also given uh the mass right so the mass of the thing that's going to be hanging uh, is going to be 0.26 kg all right so now we've got all these uh what i'm going to do first or what, what i'm going to do next is just convert this 28 centimeters into meters because we want all of them to be uh, the same units so this is just going to be 0.28 meters. You just divide by 100, right, in order to solve. So we've got 0.28 meters there. And so how do we want to solve this? So we're going to pick one of these equations, right? Uh, and so the way you pick it is based off what they tell you. So they tell us the mass passes through an equilibrium point, y equals 0, with positive velocity at t equals 0. So essentially what they're telling us here, if we have a, a graph like this, right, we know it's going to pass through this point. And so think about cosine and sine waves. We know sine is the one that passes through the origin like this, right? It's going to go like this right so it's going to be sine we're choosing the sine wave and not the cosine wave okay so because it passes through the origin cosine doesn't pass through the origin it starts here so that's why we're choosing this one we're, not, we're going to choose this one and ignore this one okay so what we want to do is solve this equation right with the variables we're given but keep in mind we're given a but we're not given omega right we need omega if we want to go ahead and solve for this so how do we want to do that so what we're going to want to do is go ahead and solve for omega so how do you do that um right so we want to replace omega right so we know omega right omega you should know this is equal to 2 pi over t and t in this case is the period so we need the period if we want to go ahead and solve for this but we can solve for the period using these given variables they give us right so this is how we do it so we know t right or the period is equal to right 2 pi over the square root of mk so this is the formula you can use to solve for the period right and if we get this we can plug it in here and then plug it in here and that's going to be our equation right so we want to solve this for t so 2 pi times the square root of m which is going to be 0.26 over k which is 305 okay so if you go ahead and do this right so plug in your calculator square root 0.26 divided by 305 and then you're going to want to take that number and multiply it by 2 pi when you do this you should get about 1.83 or sorry 0.183 so 0.183, and then this is measured in seconds because it's a period. So 0.183 seconds. Now we have t, right? And so since we have t, y of t is just equal to a times the sine, plugging this in, 2 pi over t times t, right? Just plugging this in, right? Because this is where that is. Now what we can do is just go ahead and plug stuff in. So y of t, if we're going to plug it in, it's going to be equal to a, which we know is the amplitude, which is 0.28 right 0.28 meters multiplied by the sine of 2 pi over t right which we just calculated 0.183 multiplied by t right so keep in mind this is in seconds uh but yeah so y of t is going to be equal to let's just uh, simplify it a bit more so 0.28 meters times the sine and then you're going to want to do 2 pi right so do plug in your calculator, 2 pi, and then divide by um, 0.183. So when you do this, you should get about 34.3. So it's just going to be 34.3. or 34.3. And the unit says this is going to be radians per second. So radians per second times t. So this right here is going to be your equation. So y of t equals 0.28 meters times the sine of 34.3 radians per second t. So this is your equation um, that describes the motion as a function of time. So this is A, right? A. Okay, so now that we've solved A, let's go ahead and move on to B. 
So for B, what we're trying to solve for is at what times will the spring be the longest and shortest? So for this problem, you have to think about it intuitively and I'll show you why. So we know that this is going to be a sine wave, right? Because we just calculated this. So what does a sine wave actually look like? So what I want you to do here is just draw a sine wave. So a sine wave, we know it kind of goes through the origin like this. It's going to go up, right? Then it's going to go down, right? And then it's going to end back here. This is going to be one period, right? A period is where it goes all the way um, and then back to its starting point, right? So it's going to stretch, right? And then go back down and then up. So think about how this works, right? So this whole length is a period, okay? Right? We know that's a period because it goes from uh, start to finish, right? And so this whole length is T, right? Let's just call this T, okay? So this is one period length. And then we know how a sine wave works, right? So these lengths, if I divide them up, right? These points, these are all going to be one fourth, right? One fourth the length, right? So this, the farthest point is one fourth away. These are one fourth, right? All these are one fourth, right? That's just how a sine wave works. And so since we know that, we can label each of these distances, right? So these are each is one fourth, right? Of T, right? T is just the whole period. Then we know this distance right here is just going to be one fourth T, right? Because it's one fourth of T. Then what's this distance, right? Now we want to do this whole distance. So it's just one fourth plus one fourth, which is one half T. Well, what's this distance going to be, right? It's three fourths added up. So just three fourths T. And then this is just T, right? So we know that at uh, its highest point, right? Because this represents, this is the Y, right? So at its longest, right? When it's at its longest, it's going to be here. When it's at its shortest, it's going to be here. So we know at each of these times, right? It's going to be its longest at one over fourth T. And it's going to be its shortest at three fourths T. Okay? Right? So you can see that on the graph. So what we know is, we know what T is, right? T is just 1.83, meaning we can solve for when it's at its longest and shortest. So you just want to do 1 fourth times 0.183, right? Go ahead and do that. 0.25 times 0.183. You're going to get 0 0.04575, and this is going to be seconds. Now let's do this one. 1 fourth, or sorry, 3 fourths times 0.183. And so when you do this, which is 0.75 times 0.183, you're going to get 0 0.13725 seconds okay so you can see these times right so at this time right it's at its highest and at this time it's at its uh, shortest or low or longest and shortest right but this isn't exactly your answer because think about how this works this is going to go on forever okay right it's going to go on so it's not just at this value it's at its highest it's going to be plus right or longest sorry it's at its longest it's going to be 0 0.04575 plus 0 0.183 times n so what does n represent in this case? Well, it's just going to represent the number of, right? It's going to represent, um, yeah, so n is just going to represent the number of oscillations, right? Because if it goes around like this, like, let's just draw it, n, right? So you could do it uh, right here, right? So imagine this is it, right? So we know this is 0 0.04575, right? Plus 1.83, where would that put it? Or 0.183, it'd put it right here, right? So because it goes around and we did the same thing here, it would be here, right? If we added 0.183. So we have to add them. Uh, we have to add that value, right? Because it could be any number of oscillations we don't know, right? We just want to specify to make sure. So you just do the value plus 0.183n, right? So n is just the number of oscillations. Um, but yeah, so just keep this in mind. Uh, I guess these are going to be your time values, um, right? So B, I don't know exactly how your teacher wants you to do it because this isn't really clear exactly how they want it. But for one oscillation, right, it would just be these values. But if you're talking about like uh, a, uh, multiple oscillations, it, you have to add the 0.183n, right? Just like when you add the 2 pi uh, when you're going around like a circle. But yeah, so uh, this is your equation. Uh, this is going to be your answer. Uh, and make sure you specify this is in seconds, right? But yeah, uh, but yeah, so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.